2023 was kind of a crazy year. You know what I'm saying? Especially for stupid things that happen on the internet. Uh, TikTok's still dominating all the social media landscape. And oh boy, that platform has harbored a lot of doo-doo fart, doo-doo content. So today, we're going to cover the dumbest TikTok trends of 2023. Now I want to kick things off with the Grimace Shake. On June 2023, McDonald's decided to celebrate Grimace's 52nd birthday by releasing a shake, the Grimace Shake. It's neon purple and has the berry-like kind of flavor. But the shake itself is partially the reason why this is on this video in the first place. Also, why do they choose to celebrate Grimace's 52nd birthday? You know, not really a typical birthday milestone that people would choose. Like most people choose to celebrate like a 55th birthday or a 50th birthday. So McDonald's unleashed this shake onto the public and, you know, take people on TikTok mainly started with the usual doing food reviews, tasting it and all that and showing off the shake for some views and attention. However, people are starting to associate a kind of weird trend to this milkshake yo i just got the new grimace milkshake from mcdonald's i'm so excited to try this happy birthday grimace first sip here we go happy, happy birthday, birthday grimace trying the new grimace shake happy birthday grimace yeah, kind of a weird trend, huh? And many outsiders of this trend see this as another example of wacky, weird Gen Z humor. And when this trend started kicking up on the internet, many people just assumed McDonald's had some responsibility for starting the trend to drive up milkshake sales. McDonald's obviously denies being responsible for the trend because who the f wants to be responsible for making internet memes and also there's no one at mcdonald's that creative enough to make up this trend in the first place this is my meal i call this girl dinner girl, girl, dinner. girl dinner girl dinner girl dinner remember when you were a kid and your mommy and daddy decided to just go have an anniversary dinner and leave your ass behind so you just have to grab random shit from the kitchen, you know, some chips or whatever, and a couple of noodles to make your dinner. This is exactly what this is. Of the girl dinners I've seen, there are just some that are crackers on a plate, some fruit and a stick of cheese, uh, whatever the hell they can grab at a 7-Eleven, maybe some chicken tendies and mac and cheese, which does sound pretty good. And if you're really down bad, you can just demolish an entire family-sized bag of hot Cheetos. Some of these dinners literally look like scraps you'd find like Fallout 4 or some shit. But there are also others that are way too try-hard with their girl dinners. I'm not busting out pots and pans and the whole shit and using a stove to make my girl dinner. I want something quick. That ain't girl dinner, that's dinner. And also, some people use this trend as an excuse to post some really nasty shit onto the internet. My God. Even Popeyes hopped on the trail, making a girl dinner combo. Ooh, girl dinner. There have been many people online that have criticized the girl dinner trend for basically promoting girls to eat dainty and minuscule meals because it's mostly a gender stereotype that women don't have time to cook for themselves and have to resort to these kinds of meals. Many have also said that the girl dinner trend has been used to promote eating disorders, which is unfortunately a common thing that happens on the internet. Okay, so you've probably heard of this technique called mewing. And according to people on the internet, doing mewing should help them uh, build up these chiseled jaw lines that a lot of people love to strive for. And I just Googled it and here's the technique according to WebMD. First, you gotta close your lips, move your jaw so that your front bottom teeth are just behind your front upper teeth. Cover the roof of your mouth with your tongue. Place the tip of your tongue right behind your front teeth without touching it. Some people suggest that you can find the right position if you try using the NG sound, like thing or wing. Others suggest you focus on breathing out of your nose instead of your mouth. I have to point out that it hasn't been scientifically proven that doing this technique actually helps with your jawline. Obviously, I'm not the one with the chiseled jawline, so who knows, man? Of course, there have been a lot of TikTokers shitting on people who take mewing seriously. 
Um, mostly because of how stupid they look when they do mewing. They also joke about doing month-long mewing sessions. Apparently, mewing originated from uh, John Mew, who is a British orthodontist. According to Wikipedia, he made up mewing with his son, Michael Mew. And mo most people also point out that mewing originated from incel and hyper-masculine forms on the internet. Those that are worried about like Sigma male, alpha male kind of shit. There are also people that just make fun of others online for possibly needing a mewing session or two. Now, going back to the idea that mewing isn't scientifically proven, the only evidence we really got is just anecdotes from random people online. And of course, no, no one, one on the internet ever lies. So we may never know if mewing actually works. You know, why don't you leave a comment beneath the video if you actually did mewing sessions for real and it actually helped you out because I could use a little more jaw action. What? What? What the f is a chamoy pickle? Hmm, according to Delish, it's a giant pickle stuffed with spicy sweets or crisps, sometimes wrapped in a fruit roll up and drizzled in hot sauce and chili powder. But people are loving it. As with loads of TikTok trends, it's not actually Stop new. It. Now, prior to this video, I have never heard of a chamoy pickle, but one of my roommates told me about it. And according to them, there are a lot of people online selling chamoy pickle kits. It's just a kit where they give you a chamoy pickle and people would just wrap all this candy and coat the pickle with the powders and stuff and make this absolute monstrosity of a candy snack that i've ever seen in my entire life and you know me i would never eat kind of nasty shit ever <coughs> so i got one of these fangled smashy fancy schmancy chamoy pickle kits i got this on amazon for like 20 dollars or something now i tried getting the pickle by itself and shipping it from texas to where i live costed 53 dollars so I just resort to getting the shitty uh, Jamoy Pickle Kit on Amazon. Oh, and I also got a complimentary fruit roll up. Oh, it's too bright, you can't see it. I got a fruit roll up just to uh, compliment the sweetness a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Oh! So we got some swinkles. Got a little bit of uh, something, I can't read it. Um, Some Lucas Gusano popsicle. And then the main event, Chamoy pickle. All right, let's try this. Oh my God, let's try this out. Oh, oh God. Yeah, look at that. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. This is just dill pickle and fucking red 40. Look at this, look how big it is. So I guess um, what we're supposed to do is supposed to get these candies and shit. Let's just add the candies to it. And then they stuff the candy inside. One big old stinky bite. Cheers, everyone. <laughs> oh, f Say it again. I'm a lion pizza chicken. Say it again. I'm a lion pizza chicken. Say it. I'm a lion pizza chicken. Say it. I'm a As if old people can't really understand how Gen Z humor works or why certain things are funny. TikTokers have decided to incorporate gay black p into the repertoire of humor. You probably heard the audio that goes, Is that slurp good? Yes, King! How good is that slurp? Oh! How good is that slurp, buddy? Amazing! You know, the little funny TikTok audio that's been heard in thousands and thousands of clips. Some people just put the Yes King audio onto random Fortnite gaming clips for seemingly no reason. Some people be cracking jokes with the Yes King audio. And it's just a part of TikTok and I guess our generation's obsession with gay p as funny ha ha jokes. I'm not entirely sure where it even came from because okay, we had I'm about to come and then we had the erotic barber and thug shaker and all that. And then we had the thug hunters. There was of course that Animan cartoon. I got the new 40s on the G. And now we're here with Yes King. So this style of gay meme is called thug posting where they would use 
porno of gay black men to just shit post. It's been around on the internet for a little bit. It was started on 4chan as usual, uh, with most people just baiting others into watching gay black uh, People also did thug bombing where they joined Zoom calls during the pandemic and all that, suddenly play BBC on the big screen, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I thought most of them were pretty funny. It's not my average day to look at big black oiled up men you know, blowing loads in front of the camera for me. I know one of the uh, one of the dudes in the memes and about to come didn't really like the meme when it was starting to get popular. He has kind of warmed up to the idea and had made some reaction videos on TikTok to these memes. Uh, there was also that one Discord server, Thug Shaker Central, which had leaked classified Pentagon documents. You're going to have to look up the doc. <sighs> You're going to have to look up the contents of these documents because I don't want to get sniped by Secret Service or something right now. You know what I mean? But porn as a meme has been around since the internet decided that it wants to have a sense of humor. I know everyone knows that one unfunny person that references the black dude surrounding the one white girl. And uh, there's also the uh, what are you doing step bro? Back in summer of 2023, this Titanic sub was all over social media and like the world's attention. You know what I'm talking about, the submersible that went missing when it tried to go to the Titanic wreckage. It led to this huge rescue effort, a lot of eyeballs watching the people in anticipation to see, will they survive? Because reaching the Titanic wreckage is really, really, really deep. During the whole ordeal, TikTokers have flocked onto the platform to make memes and videos poking fun at the people trapped in the submersible. During that week of June, my entire For You page was filled with these Titanic sub memes and users trying to document the ongoing rescue effort. Just people absolutely shitting on the passengers on the submarine. There were even news media outlets with like a big ass countdown of like the oxygen supply in the sub. Like it's the fucking countdown to New Year's. And most people were fine joking about the people trapped in the Titanic because they're millionaires and all that because one ticket to get on the Titanic submersible was $250,000. But man, these are some of the most out of pocket, I should not be laughing at this shit kind of TikToks I've seen. And there are also a lot of people making their own thoughts and stuff on Twitter, poking fun at the situation. Like the fact that the whole entire submarine was controlled by a fake Xbox 360 controller. There have also been a ton of industry experts and organizations that regulate submarines and stuff, like federal departments and stuff that warned the company, OceanGate, who made this submarine about how it is literally not safe to dive into the submarine wreckage, but the CEO just ignored them and continued on. And the sub also used carbon fiber, for which according to the people way smarter than me, is not suitable for deep sea exploration. But with all things in life, everything must come to an end. You know, the joke gets old, people gotta move on. So what did happen to the submarine? The phrase, la calm fit, none too crazy with it. This is like a phrase a lot of these youngins have been saying to compliment like a chill fit, a la calm fit, you know what I'm saying? Now, according to Urban Dictionary, la calm fit, AKA calm love fit, is slang for little calm fit or calm little fit. Used to describe an outfit that is none too crazy, or in other words, an outfit that is very plain or thrown together for the sake of being comfortable. It's like when you go back to high school and you just wear like sweatpants and, the sh and a hoodie, that's a calm love fit. Look at these look calm fit, none too crazy, calm love fit. It's a calm love fit, none too crazy. You know, as the phrase started out, it, it, it had the literal meaning of a 
outfit that is indeed calm and i don't know how but the phrase soon later became associated with these ass humanoid birds in the arctic yeah for like a random week on tiktok many users have been sharing these ai generated videos that showcase these big ass birds in the arctic with their white feathers standing at like 10 feet tall or something these la calm fit none too crazy birds started appearing all over the internet and you know it is kind of creepy at first but you know they're just chilling they got sometimes they have like a person standing next to them as well to show the scale of the bird and you know it's a calm la calm bird not too crazy what is this something to talk about uh they also have other names such as erosion bird and opium bird uh, the fact that it's called opium is because apparently their style is reminiscent of fashion coats that rappers from the opium record label would wear. What? Okay, this is not a new trend, but I want to complain about this shit anyway. There have been so many clickbaity TikTok slideshows where it asked me if I, you know, if I don't interact with it, if I don't like, comment, or save the fucking TikTok slideshow, I'm gonna have like 100 years of bad luck or something. Apparently, this time means a good luck. I ain't skipping. In 10 to 22 minutes, they will send you a paragraph expressing their feelings for you. You got 13 hours left to post this with the audio before the rest of your life goes wrong. There's nothing like If you subscribe to my channel or drop a donation to my Ko fi, you get a hot smoke and baby come suck your pee pee or something. You get the idea. It's the same thing like those Facebook posts where your white grandma would have this post like, please share and like for Jesus. This is just the classic clickbait for people on TikTok who foam at the mouth for views and attention, leading to some of the most low effort content that could be seen on the platform as if it can't get lower enough. Good thing I got the golden monkey. <laughs> And of course, there are also people making TikToks complaining about these bad luck TikToks. You know, at this point, I'll probably give me like, what, 500 years of bad luck? Ugh, God, I can't believe you used to believe this shit. I'm so fucking stupid. So I've been seeing a lot of people on my For You page recreating the Jennifer's Body instrumental. You know, I guess it all started when people on TikTok try to find instrumental recreations of this song and <laughs> apparently some of them claim to be 100% accurate but it turns out it's a lie. And many people thought this was kind of funny so they started making even shittier versions of the song. And once, once creating an instrumental in a funny way started to get boring, people just started to make up the song in their real life. <laughs> and you know, once recreating an instrumental kind of stopped being funny for a little bit, People just started like hallucinating the song and like everything they hear. You know, it'd just be some random ass sound that has two pauses and it'd be like, I can make Jennifer's body right now. Whistle, baby, whistle, baby, let me know. I'm going to show you how to do it and we'll start real slow. Ah, yes, the good old classic Josh Hutcherson whistle meme. You know, it's been a classic format on the internet since 
the creation of the internet, the good old switch and bait. It's like Rick rolling back in the day, the Josh Hutcherson whistle, whistle is basically the same thing. All you hoes, all of you hoes, need to remember who you're talking to. So I didn't know about this until recently. Apparently, rapper superstar, it's Drake. Yeah, I'm talking about yeah, Drake. Y'all know who Drake is. So Drake apparently has an alter ego for when he does gambling. And of course, he introduced it on the live stream, his Insta live, I think, with branded merch that you can buy off of his fucking OVO website. Roche brought me the hat that I need for the stream right here. This is my alter ego. Anita Max Ween. Anita Max Ween. Anita Max Ween. Anita Max Ween. Makes me wonder why Drake fans get mad when people call him fruity, you know? You can't call yourself a lover boy and have this haircut unless you got some sweetness in you. You know, nothing wrong with Drake being a little fruity. I just wish he embraced it a little more. Also, why the f is Drake gambling? Doesn't he already have like a gorillion dollars? Like, Steak and Kick has been sponsoring the hell out of Drake, paying him to do shit tons of gambling streams. And I already talked about gambling streams in my previous video and why they're absolutely terrible, where I just go on about the dangers of live stream gambling and such, and how young people look up to streamers winning these million billion dollars, which is why I want to announce my sponsorship with Steak.com. Come on, baby, come on. Oh, oh my God, let's break this. And that clip of Drake introducing Anita, Anita Max Ween has been haunting TikTokers across the globe. Many people just making fun of Drake for having an alter ego for the sole purpose of selling merch and promoting online gambling. But you always know what Drake says. Feel like I'm by because you one of the guys, girl. Oh, Jesus Christ. You've probably heard this sound on somewhere online where it goes. Sticking out your gap for the Rizzler. You're so skibbity. You're so phantom tax. I just want to be your Sigma. Woo, the Gen Alphas back at it again with another fresh hot meme off the presses, you know what I'm saying? This song conveniently highlights all the newfangled slang that these kids be saying, like, yet, Riz, Phantom Text, what the f is a Phantom? People have also made covers of this song. There's an acoustic guitar version of this song. Someone made a piano ballad or something and all sorts of good things you can find. But this is like the same thing as that Fortnite American Girl parody, you know? You know, and this song has also led to many users on this godforsaken platform to begin having discussions on what the f are kids laughing at nowadays or something, you know? I've heard kids in public sing this song out loud, watching TikTok full volume on their iPads with the kid case that can't be dropped. You know, I'm not trying to be those cringe people that think, Everything that these kids are doing nowadays is so stupid and dumb. I don't understand. They're screwed. You know, there's some smart kids out there, I think. Before we get to the next entry, here are some honorable mentions. Listen, I was never book smart, I'm money smart, make me more intelligent, more intelligent. It come with Edward, it come with Edward. It comes with egg roll. It comes with egg roll. It comes with egg roll. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I know. All right. 
Sin, Sin City wasn't made for you, Angel. Here's the last entry of this video. Skibbity toilet! If you don't know, which I'm surprised if you don't know because most people know whether they want to or not, Skibbity Toilet is a YouTube series created by the f Boom. It's basically just Gmon animation of like dudes sticking out their heads out of the toilet and singing the Skibbity song which I can't play because I think it's copyrighted. Apparently it's like a series with a whole plot line and everything. And I looked up the plot on Wikipedia and according to it, it says the series follows a storyline about a war between human headed toilets and humanoid characters with electric devices for heads. And we also talk and Wikipedia also talks about how the skibbity toilets and their leader, the G man, Threaten humanity. Most people just talk about the first video about Skibbity Toilet. Every kid in the world has probably seen the original video, the first episode. People see this as the first big Gen Alpha meme to become popular on the internet. There's also a bunch of Half Life nerds that have been complaining about how the series reuses Half Life 2 assets because it's being made on Source Filmmaker. Most kids nowadays probably don't even recognize any of the characters that are being used in Skibbity Toilet. Skibbity Toilet and sticking out your gat for the Rizzler kind of showcase how Gen Z has become the old kids that don't understand what the new young hip trends are nowadays. I mean, to be fair to these kids, some of the shit that I watched when I was a kid was pretty stupid too. You know, I got like YouTube poops. You will die. MLG compilation dank meme vines. And also many people wonder how the series got popular because Gary mod videos have been around for a long time. Of course we had creators like Kitty0706, we had Gmod Idiot Box, all of Vanos Gaming's Gmod videos. And with any big trend that, that hit it right with the kids, there are a lot of shitty knockoff versions on TikTok that try to cash in on the trend for views and attention. Also, people criticize people shitting on Skibbity Toy for just overthinking it and it's just a funny thing that kids like to laugh at nowadays, you know, what's the big deal? And it turns out that Skibbity Toy has been influencing kids so bad, <laughs> there have been a lot of Indonesian and Southeast Asian websites that have been talking about something called Skibbity Toilet Syndrome. It's where a lot of young children in those regions began recreating the first Skibbity Toilet video. They would sit in like a bucket or something, pretend it's a toilet and start singing the song, you know, and all that. They basically just mimic the toilets. You know, listen, whatever you think about the kids and all that, I'm not just gonna shit on the younger generation and stuff because I just simply don't understand what their humor is and what's going on, you know? Like there's a lot of things in life that I don't think is funny, but a lot of people think is funny. People like Amy Schumer, and I don't understand why. People like Joe Coy, and I don't understand why. But at the end of the day, these are our future generation generation, our future doctors, lawyers, and all of that. And we shouldn't judge them until they grow up to make their own decisions in life and such. That's it. That's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to donate to my Ko-Fi if you want to help me out and continue making YouTube videos. That's it.